Welcome, everybody, and today we have another author interview. Today, the legendary Jim Butcher, author of The Dresden Files and Codex Alera. Not Codex Alexa, like I called it on a panel in front of people. Codex Alera. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Jim? Pretty good. Hey, Alexa, summon my metal furies. That, 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 <laughs> that would work. I, for like a year, thought that was the title of the series, and that was, that was my bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, it's a really exciting time for Dresden fans, and I'm I'm not even caught up on the series. I don't know if you've been made aware of that. I've been burning through, and I just got through White Knight, which I absolutely loved. Um, so this series has been just slowly building into one of the most interesting, s subtly large-scale epic fantasies I've come across in a while. Like it started small and grew, which has really just like been fun to experience. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of been fun to do. Uh, uh, but I, I knew where I wanted to go eventually. So, you know, when I first got started, it's like, okay, well, we got to start off with like, you know, we, we, you, you can't just start off fighting the Green Goblin when it's Spider-Man. You know, you have yeah. to start off with some random mugger and, you know, build your <laughs> way up to the arc enemy. So uh, that's actually a question I had. Was it like from day one you knew I was going to build Dresden into this larger, you know, factions against factions thing? Or was it, no, it started small and it just kind of happened where it got bigger? No, I, I kind of knew and, and, and you know, kind of had a plan for it and outline and stuff. And that makes it sound like I'm smart. But if you actually know the story, I'm not. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I'm very enthusiastic and I work hard and I'm a little bit lucky. Smart sort of plays into it once in a great while. But uh, uh, in this instance, um, the only reason I wrote the book was to prove to my writing teacher how wrong she was. Because uh, uh, I'd been in her class for a couple of years. Uh, uh, she wrote, it, this was at the, the professional writing school at the University of Oklahoma. They kicked me out, by the way. Um, but but uh, uh, not this teacher. It, it was the administration I had issues. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I kind of have issues with authority figures, uh, I guess. Or it doesn't come across I, in your I, writing. I don't, like to, I don't like to say that I have issues with them. I like to say that they have issues with me. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, it sort of works out that way a lot, but not, but not with my teacher. But, my, but she'd been trying to tell me for a good two years, hey, you know, when we're talking about stuff in class, you're always talking about, you know, you're always talking about all these examples like in from Babylon 5 or from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, why don't you try writing something similar to that and see if, because that's where your your interest and your analysis ability seem to lie. So maybe, that, maybe that'd be a wise thing for you to do to, 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 to turn to as a project, to write. Uh, to which I replied, Debbie. Because I was like on a first name basis with her, because it was that college professor relationship, you right. know, where you, you start to think you know stuff. And and I'm like, listen, I'm a swords and horses fantasy writer, okay? I'm I'm gonna write I, I'm I'm gonna write Tolkieny stuff. That is my goal. And she's like, oh, okay. And she didn't say anything else about it. But we kept having arguments about writing, and I kept arguing with her because I had a bachelor's degree in English literature, but. <laughs> With a minor, or no, not even a minor, uh, with an emphasis in creative writing. So, I mean, obviously, I knew what I was talking about. Whereas she had merely published 40 novels. <laughs> so what could she know, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so but, but one semester, to win my arguments, I decided that to win them, I was going to do the classic thing. And I was going I was, I was, I was going to do everything she told me to do. I was going to fill out, I was going to plan the project like she wanted and outline everything like she wanted and fill out all the little forms and do the little character sheets and all my, all, all the little background research stuff. And she would see what terrible cookie cutter pablum crap emerges from that kind of process. So I wrote the first book of the Dresden file, <laughs> which showed her. Well, uh, that's not the origin story I expected, to be honest. Exactly. So she, she gets done with like the first three chapters or so, right? And she looks up at me and she says, well, you did it. I said, what? She says, you did it. This will sell. This is a professional quality. I don't know if it'll be the first thing you sell, but you will be able to sell this. And I was like, wow. Because her, she was not a teacher who believed in molly coddling her students. She believed mm -hmm. in treating you like New York editors would treat you. So like her, her feedback would include things like rolling up my chapter, leaning across the desk, hitting me on the head with it and saying, what were you thinking? You know, like that. <laughs> so when she says you did it, it was like a big deal because she doesn't throw that stuff out there. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so I was like, okay, I did it. Oh, wow. What do I do? She says, well, next week, come in, come in with an outline for the rest of it. 
And she meant the rest of the book. <laughs> so I come back in with his outline for a 20-page series, or a 20-novel series, with a big old apocalyptic trilogy on the end of it. Uh, 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 and... Uh, 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 and, and, and I was I spent a good 20, 25 minutes going through the entire story. I mean, the, the overall I mean, the overall mythos story, the whole thing. Uh, 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 and, and, and with, you know, and I had outlines and story questions written for each of the novels and so on. And, and the look on her face, I can see it now. <laughs> and, and in my head now, it's this look that's kind of like. <laughs> like this. It finally got me on board. And even though uh, uh, she didn't want to, she didn't want to tell me, "Hey, you're never going to sell a 20 book series to 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 a publishing house as a first time writer." Uh, uh, she also she finally got me on board, so she didn't she didn't want to discourage me either. So she just looked at me and said, "You know, I think if you can sell a 20 book series, you should be doing okay." And, <laughs> you know, not and, and but but she didn't tell me it was impossible, and uh, because she never told me it was impossible, I I, I did it. <laughs> and now we have Dresden, so that is that's yeah, the... and that's that's how that worked out, man. And I, I'd like to think that I'm a genius and so on, but really, it's a combination of the right kind of genius with the right kind of stupid, apparently. <laughs> uh, well, that's uh, all the best stories, right? They have to combine yeah, the two. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I've I've and, and and the Codex Alera, I wrote that thing on a bet. I mean, my gosh. Um, Wait, that, literally... that's true. You wrote that on a bet. Yeah, that started with an online bet. Yeah, um, uh, 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 so that was you know. So it, it's I, I don't I, I try not to claim a whole lot of credit for being smart about this writing thing. I'm I'm uh, I'm 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 a little bit dumb, but very hardworking and very lucky apparently. So it's uh, hard work is pretty much at the core of almost everyone's hard work yeah. is at the core of everything, but particularly for being a writer, uh, persistence and uh, a commitment to 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 actually, you know, completing this task. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, as, as you're as a, as a wannabe writer, whatever you need to do to keep going, do that. You know, I mean, I had my little writing nook that had like the World War Two propaganda posters all around it about victory and I will not quit and, you know, all, all stuff like that. And uh, uh, I mean, I mean, it took me 10 years to break in. So. Uh, uh, that's a long time to work a part-time job. No one pays you for, and you and you get made fun of for at Christmas. You yeah. know, so I, I had a cousin who kept asking me, "Hey, when are you gonna get a real job? You sell that book yet? No, not yet. When are you gonna get a real job? Well, I, I don't know. I'm still working on this book, and and that went on for seven, eight years, and then finally I got published, and then a while later, you know, the book started selling pretty well, and then there was a TV show and stuff, and uh, four or five years ago, I was at I was at Christmas and. And uh, I was able. He 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 hadn't asked me when I was going to get a real job for a couple of years. But I walked up to him and said, "You know, you know what I think? I think maybe I just won't get a real job. I'm just going to do this life." <laughs> That's the satisfying thing. Ever. Oh yeah. Gosh. Oh my gosh. When when somebody's been when when somebody's been mocking your efforts for a long time and you win through, that is worth it all by itself. Even if I hadn't had the job and stuff, if I'd been able to say, "Hey, it's done," you know, ha ha. Yeah. Uh, 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 that would have been that would have been so worth it. Well, even if it doesn't start selling while you're alive, you can still make the claim. It will. I'll be one of those posts post yeah, exactly. death author. One day. Yeah. One day. Yeah. One day I'll be appreciated. I don't care if anybody reads me after I'm dead. I'm doing this for the money. So. <laughs> uh, well, you you mentioned uh, Tolkien there, which nicely leads into one of the questions I had one of my fans here send for me, and that is, who did you feel were your influences when you first started writing, and has that changed at all? Are there different authors that now later on you've kind of picked up more and got more into actually dissecting their writing? Uh, my influences come from a lot of places um, because um, I regard storytelling as something that happens across a a lot of different mediums, and what I really am is a storyteller. Um, uh, uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to get your stories told. It's a very different practice doing it in a comic book, doing it on television, doing it in a movie. Um, uh, uh, but um, as far as influence, so, uh, probably the greatest influence on my life was Star Wars. Uh, uh, that was the first movie I remember going to in a movie theater. Uh, 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 yeah, was was seeing the original Star Wars like like two days after it premiered because... You know, my sisters were teenagers and very trendy at the time. Um, let's see. Uh, probably my favorite author uh, is, is, is Robert B. Parker. Uh, okay. He writes mysteries. He writes the Spencer novels. I think he's one of the he was one of the finer writers uh, that America's uh, produced, uh, in my opinion, at least. Um, uh, plus, 
you know, he, he, he died a couple years ago here, but he died at the keyboard like a man. And uh, that's, <laughs> uh, that's kind, of, kind of professional goals for me. You know, if I got to go out, I want to go out while I'm writing. You know, that'd be that'd be fine. Uh, uh, I, I uh, expect that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, but but Robert Parker, uh, Tolkien was a huge influence. But huger than Tolkien was um, uh, C.S. Lewis uh, uh, and Lloyd Alexander, who wrote the Pride Inn Chronicles. I don't know if you've read those. They're young adult young adult fantasy novels. Uh, they're epic fantasy. They're sort of uh, they're sort of Tolkien for kids, you know. Uh, uh, but I've gone back. I go back and reread them every five years or so, and I'm all I always get something new out of it because. Uh, uh, even though it was written for children, it, it takes on very deep and very adult subjects, and it's it's just a it's just a wonderfully written series. So if you haven't read the Pride Inn Chronicles by Lord, by Lloyd Alexander, you should go find them. They're excellent. Okay, I think I have them on my shelf. I, I get a lot of books sent to me, so I believe yeah, they yeah. are there. <laughs> They're the ones. It starts off with Terran Wanderer, and then Disney did a movie about the Black Cauldron because that one had zombies. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, yeah, they have it's a giant. They, they, the enemy gets a giant black cauldron. You can put corpses in it, get zombies out, and you know, go. It's like, okay, great. That's a good, you know, that's a, that, that's a good place to start. So before we start recording here, and I, I believe your reputation precedes yourself here. I believe you're into the D and D and LARPing world, correct? Correct. All right. So I've I've seen this debate multiple times online, and I'd like to get it settled from the authority himself when it comes to Dresden. Okay. In terms of his alignment and character build, is he chaotic good, neutral good? Is he a typical, you know, sorcerer? Where has he fallen in in terms of that build there? Uh, uh, on a D and D build, I actually have his character sheet somewhere. I think it's in storage wow. in DC right now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was how I started. I did D and D character sheets for all the main characters because that was what I knew. So you know, I figured why not? Works. Uh, he doesn't actually have. He's only got like the 16 intelligence. He's like just barely smart enough to be a frontline wizard. But he had an 18 <laughs> constitution. I actually rolled the character and got the 18 constitution for him. So it's like, well, this guy's gonna get beat up a lot, you know. <laughs> and he has, you know. Yeah. So I'm, oh yeah. I'm pleased with that. Uh, let's see. Dresden would probably be. Uh, uh, he'd be somewhere between a neutral good and chaotic good character. Um, the, the way we do magic in the Dresden Files universe is not only do you have to do all the study, but you also have to have the bloodline as well. So he's both a sorcerer and a wizard. Maybe he multi-classes into that. I don't know. Uh, uh, the sorcerer certainly seems to be better at the rough and tumble, and that, that seems to lean more heavily towards Dresden. Uh, uh, although you could also argue that he, he might have taken a couple of levels of Warlock once he signed on with Mab. Mm -hmm. So that's also a possibility. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't translate directly. I actually, uh, I actually was talking with Wizards of the Coast once about doing a, a project for them. They wanted to reboot Dragonlance uh, a while back, and they asked me if I would if I would if I would work on that. So I was sort of putting it putting the idea together and trying to figure out how I'd do it. And uh, I, I, w I wound up not doing it because I asked them if Margaret and Tracy were were had a had approval of this. And they started giving me these weasel answers, and Margaret, uh, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman are the original authors, of course. So I don't want to go play with their stuff unless unless I've got their blessing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they they had not talked to them or anything, so I I wound up noping out of the project. But one of the things that that that, that Wizards of the Coast asked me, they're like, we want to be sure that this that this story is for, is is compatible with fourth edition. I'm like, you want to make sure my story is fourth edition compatible? They're like, yes. I'm like. <laughs> okay, <that's a> problem. <laughs> it's a story. It's not a. It's not really a compatibility issue. It's a story. Right. Right. Oh man. Uh, so, have you ever played that character sheet you wrote up for Tristan? Oh. Uh, oh God, no. God, no. Okay. I mean, I, I hardly ever get to play. I'm mostly the DM. Oh, okay. Same. I actually usually typically fall yeah, in the DM. As, as a player, I get bored, and I, 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 I want to roll up new characters every three weeks, and you know, stuff like that. Uh, it's I'm hard to yeah. GM and, and, and playing a bunch of characters. It's just playing one seems a little dull. And trying to make your friends hate each other is always a good little now. <laughs> yeah, well, my goal is always to get them to be angry at me at the end of the session. Oh, so well, that works. On at the end of the session, you know, I, I want to make sure and, and, you know, to deliver that last bit of drama and then go, and we're done for the week. And everybody goes, no, you can't stop there. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I can. You know, that's my goal. I don't always hit it, but that's the, that's the goal that I want. They keep language. The session isn't still going. 
All right. So, all right. All right. So I'm I'm looking over here and I, there's one question I really wanted to ask you because it involves a quote from your series. And it's one of my favorite quotes. And that is uh, he's uh, Dresden is asked, are you always a smart ass? And he says, no, sometimes I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah. And do you particularly look to any legendary smart mouth characters for inspiration or is just Dresden a reflection of some things you want to say to people? Where do you come up with his personality <laughs> in those moments? Um. I got beat up a lot when I was a kid, uh, probably because I couldn't keep my mouth shut when I should have. And I was one of the smartest kids in class and, and the second smallest kid in class. <laughs> so combo. You put all those three things together. Yeah, that kid's going to get beat up a lot, you know, because I, I didn't know when to back down. and I didn't know when to keep my mouth shut. So that happened quite a bit. And okay. uh, uh, wait, what was the original question? Because I, I was going to get there. I know. Uh, is there any characters you've looked to to kind of oh, inspire? For smart attitude, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you start with somebody. You start with Han Solo and Indiana Jones because Harrison Ford can smart ass at people, and, and yes. he's he's just so he's just so calm and level about it. Mm -hmm. You know that when he delivers the insult, it, it's not like it's it's not like he he's he said something that you know is an insult. You know, he <laughs> he, just, he just kind of floats it out into the air and lets lets it burst on you and, and kill you. But uh, uh, but start starting there. Uh, uh, let's see who else Jack Burton uh, from Big Trouble in Little China uh, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Big Trouble in Little China but oh, yeah. yeah okay Kurt Russell plays Jack Burton American truck driver who just lips off to absolutely everyone and then any character that Will Smith has played ever <laughs> for a long time I wanted Will Smith to be Harry Dresden because just because he would deliver the sass perfectly every time you know, Will Smith can can lip off to anyone and make you believe that 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 yeah, that person has this coming. You know, I'm on Will's side here, uh, uh, and that was that that was always uh, he was always somebody that I thought, hey, that should be the guy that plays Harry Dresden. If this is ever a movie? I just never think I'd actually be doing it. So you blend Harrison Ford, Kurt Russell, and Will Smith, and you get Harry Dresden. Yeah, more or less. I think that so. works. That works. Um, and so. When you're so, is it safe to say when you were writing Dresden at first, you were picturing any of those, or is it completely different? You don't really care about the look of the character. Uh, the the character is more in my head. It's more a collection. He, I mean, I always write him from first person. I hardly ever write anything where somebody's looking at Dresden. You know, mm -hmm. so you know when I, when I, I'm I'm sitting in his head, I don't really get to see his face and stuff unless he looks in the mirror. It took me a couple of books to figure out what he looked like. Mm -hmm. Uh. uh I mean, I sort of knew generally, you know, I, I sort of, I, I uh, you know, I just said, okay, well, let's just make him sort of vaguely Duchovny and only taller and go from there. Okay. You know? uh, 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 but, but yeah, I mean, in my head now, now he looks like uh, there's a fan artist uh, named Mika. Uh, uh, Mika. Mika is a fan in Japan and, and she is, she's a graphic artist and she is amazing. And now my characters look like her art. <laughs> uh, just because I've seen her art so much, so much, and, and I'll just be like, oh. but yeah, I don't know. But if you look up Mika Mika Kaloda, uh, uh, she's uh, uh, she does uh, uh, some amazing character art, and 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 a lot of it has appeared in like uh, the the books and so on, or in the or in the in the rule books. Uh, a lot of Mika's arts was in like Dresden Files, Accelerated, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, so she she you know she's done some amazing work. So in my head, my char the characters look like that now. You know, especially, did... Harry, uh, especially Harry and Thomas. She gets them exactly right. So she just kind of overrode whatever you had there because it was just, yep, okay, I want that. <laughs> well, whatever I had was vague, and what she had was really specific and fit. And mm -hmm. so I didn't even intend for that to happen. But, but you know, now it's just like, well, in my head, that's what he looks like now. You know, so what can I do? I guess the artist wins. Yeah. Oh. Artist wins in this one. No matter how creative I feel like I can ever write, something about physical art just lets me know those people are talented in a way that I will never be. Like the craft yeah. of writing, it's amazing. Well, I, I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say in a way that you'll never be. If you ever want to go out and try and learn art, you can't. Yeah, I'm, just uh, need ten thousand hours to. Yeah, you know, another ten thousand hours of, of mastering a craft, and you can do it. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take some levels in artist and going to art classes, uh, uh, with, with, with Kitty and so on. And, you know, she's a fairly capable artist. And so she's, she, she wants to, to brush up on her stuff and she's taking me in and, and showing me how to do the art. So I, I am working on the arts now. Okay. Uh, I'm not, you know, in my copious free time, I'm working on my art. Are we going to see you do the cover of a Dresden book down the road? <laughs> oh God, I hope not. 
uh, <laughs> maybe when I go independent, and that way I don't have to pay somebody else. You don't want <laughs> if I go completely independent and off the off the the main publishing circuit, you know, and just say no, I will have all of the pie, and it shall be mine. It will be a smaller pie, but it will all be mine. Mm. Uh, I suppose I suppose maybe then I do my own cover. But until that happens, at the, at the moment, I think I'm too lazy for that. Uh, uh, because if you go independent publishing and publish all your own stuff, you got to do all your own editing and all your own proofreading and all your own covers and all your own, you know, all your own software and all your own uh, various master copies in the various formats and so on, and make sure they all look good. And and uh, 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 and, and it, while that could be done, it would be an enormous pain and take up a bunch of my time. And and I would rather play video games and LARP. So you know. <laughs> Penguins kind of got me in, a, in an arm lock there as long as I'm lazy, you know, which it seems to well, – that'll, that'll, that'll carry on for a while. I like my video games and LARPing. Are you the guy who's saying up-to-date on the latest games, or are you sticking with some classics that are just near and dear to your heart? Uh, mostly the near and dear classics. Uh, I'll look at new games once in a while, but I'm very suspicious of them unless they're awesome, mm-hmm. you know, unless they're clearly awesome. So, uh, uh, so you see me playing a lot of, like, Le- League of Legends – uh, Battlefield, uh, 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 Fallout 4 has been a big one. I think I've got about 8,000 hours in Fallout 4. I'm almost a master of Fallout 4. Wow, uh, impressive. Uh, I think a lot of them must have been when I fell asleep and, and left the computer on. I think many of the hours are there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm diehard Diablo 2. I think I replay it at least once a year. Like, that's just my... Diablo 2, yeah. 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 So... You have this very interesting relationship with the occult in Dresden, where it seems almost respectful. You clearly do your research, or you're having someone bring you a lot of great research, but you're also willing to make fun of it, be absurd. Is, is, do you really work on that balance, or does it just seem to happen naturally with the narrative? Uh, it, it, it just happens. I mean, I don't really balance stuff out like that. It's just a, it's just a matter of... Uh, when I was putting the Dresden Files together, it was my goal to be very inclusive in my planning, uh, uh, not because it was not because it was particularly the PC thing to do at the time, although I suppose it might have been. But uh, uh, but what I really wanted to do was I just wanted to be able to play with anybody's action figures that I wanted. So when I was putting it together, uh, uh, the idea the idea was like w- was always like don't ever think does this monster does this magic does this belief system fit into your world? Ask. How does it fit into your world? Assume that it fits, because it all fits here on this planet in real life. And the Dresden Files, you know, world is is a little bit more fantastic than than our place, maybe a little. And uh, uh, so, so yeah, I would just plan. So if if it can happen here in the real world, it can sure happen in my fictional world. And so once I did that, it was it was, you know, it became a, it became a lot easier as soon as I knew that. Uh, that I was going to be, you know, using whatever, you know, whatever came to hand and whatever, uh, you know, whatever it just was going to make a good story. Then after that, it became a little bit easier to to see some of the absurdities of some of the things that were coming to and to make fun of them where they where they seemed appropriate to make fun of them or to figure out explanations of why the absurdity was just, you know, what humans had figured out. That's really the problem in the Dresden Files is that humans are the observers of everything and they're terrible observers. Uh, so. <laughs> You know, so so Dracula, like we see uh, at the movie theaters and the Dresden Files books, is a, is actually a combination of you know the accounts of hundreds of people who have survived encounters with various vampires over the centuries. There's not a lot of them, but when you add them together, you get this patchwork account that looks like Dracula. So you know, so have you ever heard that you know the story of the three blind men and the elephant? No. Where, no. The three blind men go walk up to an elephant, and one of them pats the ele- pats the elephant's ear and says, "An elephant is like a giant fan." And the other guy pats the elephant's side and says, the elephant is a giant wall. And the other one pats the elephant's trunk and says, the elephant's a giant snake. And they're all right, and they're all completely wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's not their fault they're wrong. They're blind. They can't see the whole picture. And so once once I realized that that was going to be the basis of how I was, how I was going to do the supernatural stuff, that it was all just, you know, all the, all the legends and, and folklore that we have are mostly the result of us being too dumb to understand what's going on, which sounds very, very human to me for some reason. Um but once I once I knew that, then it was like okay, so so uh, I can take this part of the legend and this part of the legend, which are both very cool, and keep them in the story, and I can discard this part of the legend because it's not useful to to what I'm doing right here, and so I can just say that people got that one wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you don't have werewolves reproducing left and right, you know, with werewolves. Right. It just doesn't happen, you know, like that. And, and and to move on from there. Mm-hmm. Very, it's interesting that it kind of lets you shed anything that's 
fat. It's not going to be meat to your story, so you can just keep it streamlined with the what fits the narrative. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, um, and because that that's always been one of my one of my big things is is to try and cut out anything that doesn't belong. Uh, 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 that was why uh, uh, this 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 latest series has been or this latest couple of books has been so interesting. Uh, uh, because I was, I was, I, essentially, I was trying to reinvent the mousetrap. This is getting a little bit more into announcements for the future, but uh, essentially, I was trying to reinvent the mousetrap on on this next couple of books, where uh, I wanted the book to be going along, uh, uh, just kind of like your regular Dresden ride that people were expecting, only to get to the middle and then to take a hard radical skew and go into something completely awesome that nobody was looking for. Uh, but as it turns out, that's not a very good way to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it for like three years, uh, 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 working on working on that one to try and get it to work, and I finally got this monstrosity cobbled together that was four hundred thousand words long or something like that. It was it was three hundred and change, and 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 took that in and, and took that into my editor, and my editor's like, well, uh, uh, if we publish this, Jim, this is so far outside our normal bounds of of where we're going. That if we publish this it, as 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 a hardback, it's going to be a fifty dollar hardback. We're going to have to up the price to that to make a profit. And I was like, oh, I am not going to be the guy that 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 sets that post. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be the guy that does that. And uh, so they so like, and and they're, and they're like, well, here's the thought though. I mean, you did write two thirds of a novel before you took off on this other this hard skew turn part of the novel. Maybe you should. Maybe this should be two books instead of one book. Uh, uh, to which, to which I replied, to which, to which I replied, oh, that that sounds like so awful as well. And I kind of stopped and thought about it. I'm like, well, you know, on balance, maybe people would like to get two books this year instead of one book. Uh, uh, so that's what's happening. Uh, uh, Peace talks will be out in will be out uh, July 14th, and the follow up to Peace talks. And this is the first place it's been announced ever, even though it might not be aired until after we go Maine. <laughs> but uh, uh, the follow-up to Peace Talk is, is called Battleground, and it will be out uh, in October. Uh, I believe it. I believe it'll be out for for Comic Con or for New York Comic Con uh, if we're if we're through the if we're through the coronavirus thing by then. So, uh, wow. so that is so the plan. Out. So this year, this year is two Dresden books, not one Dresden book. You're you're going hard against the fantasy trend right now of being seven years between books, and you're doing two in one. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm gonna do two books this year, and 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 then and I'm working on the next uh, Cinder Spires book now, so that for the steampunk, the next steampunk should be out, you know, sometime after that. I'll, I'll hopefully I'll finish it before the end of the summer. Very very cool. That is. An interesting story leading up to two books that you had one and just how much yeah, white writing did that I, I, cause? I every one Dresden book this year, but I lied. I do that. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're gonna have two instead. Okay, so did you have to rewrite a ton to manage that, or was it no? There was a pretty good cut, and you can go from there. Uh, and it, it was a ton of rewriting, and okay. it was it was it was yeah it was it was in the fall last year, and I was doing you know sixteen hour days, seven days a week. Uh, uh, to get them to get them both lined up so that, that they would be actual complete novels and not you know portions of novels. Even so, I think these two come out like um, uh, when I was a kid. You always knew things were exciting in the fall because that's when the two part episode things would start on all the various shows. You yes. know, they'd cut off an episode. Now come back next week to see if Bo and Luke Duke survived this jump. You know, or whatever. Uh, uh, but that was when you got excited. Was when the two part episodes came out. And I think that's what this is. is it's a two part episode. So, uh, uh, and yeah, and I wanted them to publish them back to back, like a month apart. And they're like, no, Jim, we have to publish too many of your books now. We can't, you're not some little guy anymore and get away with this stuff. You know, you have to work with us because there's lots of moving going on. And yeah. There's lots of crates that have to go places. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So they're like, okay, three months, we can do it in three months. Or, you know, we can do it in three months uh, and do that. I'm like, oh, three months we'll have to do. You know, but so, it's, yeah, it's... so you get the next book in three months. Three months after Peace Talks, and you said it's called Battlegrounds, correct? Battleground. It's very, yeah. very hard. Title hard turn there. Peace Talks. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've been, I've been pretty much saying that Peace Talks were not going to go well for like the past five years. So, yeah. Or rather, I've been saying they would all go perfectly, which should have warned anybody who knows me. <laughs> when, did, when in history did Peace Talks really go well? Like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Usually they don't go well until after somebody's been beaten bloody. You know, and then the peace talks go smoothly. Then but, there's a gun to someone's head, and the peace talks go great. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So then there's going to be battlegrounds, then peace talks two, the repeacing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, peace talks two. No, no, not so much. 
Um, uh, uh, but you'll have to you'll have to read it and see. But yeah, uh, uh, I would compare Battleground to Changes uh, in terms of in terms of, of of how serious it is for the series. Uh, so so yeah, but you haven't got to Changes yet, which mwah, uh, I'm, yeah. Every it's funny. Every Dresden fan ever, the closer I get to it, just goes, just wait, and they get smugger and smugger. I know, the closer I, know. I get, and they're, they're they're just like sitting here waiting, like. I want to see your reaction. I want to see it happen. I want to see the look on your face when you get to that part, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I do to all my friends when they come over. I'll be like, have you seen The Good Place yet? No. Oh, then we're going to marathon season one of The Good Place. And, <laughs> and start that and wait until they get and wait till they get to the big reveal at the end of season one of The Good Place and just watch their face like. <laughs> and I feel especially proud about that one because I called that one within five minutes of starting to watch the show. You know. I mean, I'm like, here's my, you want, you guys want me to make a prediction? And everybody goes, no, like, the whole <laughs> because, you know, this is like what I do for a living. So I'm usually pretty right or pretty close to right, you know, when I'm predicting uh, uh, stories, but, uh, uh, but so I wrote it down and then at the end, everybody was like, oh, and I just opened the envelope and held it up. <laughs> Everybody's like, damn it, Jim. <laughs> I don't want to spoil for anybody who's out there. If you haven't seen season one of The Good Place, go watch it. It's some of the best TV around. Excellent comedy. I mean, okay. it's a comedy about philosophy, and it's got me that excited. So, you know, okay. it sort of, sort of tells you how well they do it. But uh, uh, lots of really solid work there. Uh, we have a couple more Patreon questions I'd like to get to, and then some, some quotes I'd love your reactions to, if you wouldn't mind. It's kind of a segment we do here where I just kind of throw some things some other writers have said and get your take on them. Um, but okay. w one of these questions I'm really excited to uh, ask you because I haven't gotten to this yet. And it's from another YouTuber here who asked, uh, with what is unarguably the coolest motos motorcycle scene in fantasy book ever, the battle for the island, do you personally ride or do you just like having Murphy ride? Uh, no, that's a Murphy thing. Okay. Uh, I do not ride myself. Um, uh, um, I believe I have talked about my awareness and my my profound fullness of clue, you know, in my in my, in my original uh, speech to my writing teacher. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. If you're riding a motorcycle, you you have to be alert and you have to have good vision, and those are neither things that I'm very good at. You know, uh, I mean, uh, I'm the kind of person who almost has car wrecks because I'm I'm doing book dialogue between characters out loud in the car to myself. Like I'm just there in the car by myself, but I'll be I'll be doing the dramatic scene while I'm sitting there driving and so on. Uh, uh, so, yeah, yeah, motorcycle would not be conducive. <laughs> with that I, you have a level I, of self-awareness i appreciate though where it's just that would be a bad formula <laughs> it would be terrible yeah that would be a bad mix okay uh, uh, uh yeah yeah terrible just awful so we, we hit on this uh next one a little bit here but I actually I, i'm curious to expound on it further and it's how much of yourself aside from dresden do you see in your characters do you share murph's passion for guns or is it no same as the motorcycle that's totally different is michael channeling your inner paladin that's somewhere deep down or is it um, not really yourself? Dresden Files characters are mostly people that I would like to be, uh, or like to think I would be, or 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 people who I would have I'm afraid I would be. Because uh, uh, let's <laughs> be honest, if if somebody handed me a, if somebody handed me Dresden's power, I would be a, I would be a giggling villain so fast. Oh my gosh! Not just a villain, one who was having fun. You know, that kind of villain. Yeah. Uh, Everyone uh, wants to be Luke Skywalker, but in reality, you would be a Sith. Like, you know. Yeah. I mean, gosh, yeah. D come on. The Sith just have a cooler philosophy anyway, but anyhow. For sure. Uh, uh, yeah, it's the whole don't get attached to other people thing. I can't agree with that. No. You know? I, I can't back up the Jedi on that one, but anyway. Yeah. I'm sorry. We have a little bit of a segment here that we've done before in interviews, and I'd love to continue with you where I just throw some quotes from other authors at you, and we see, you know, what, what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you want to throw them under the bus or back them up? And the first one here is from Agatha Christie, who says, the best time to plan a book is while you're doing the dishes. Huh. Um. I, I, I wouldn't agree with dishes specifically, but while you're doing something, while you're doing work with your hands, uh, especially if it's a little bit monotonous and you don't have to think about it too much, uh, stuff like doing that, I mean, like doing the dishes is, is you know, a similar thing. For me, you know, I've, I've got a lot on my land out here in, in Colorado. I've got a lot of trees that come down that I have to manage, and I do a lot of planning while I'm doing that. But, you know, I mean, it's all, if, you're, if, you, if you've got work that you're doing that is keeping your hands busy and the rest of you is bored, uh, then, yeah, that's a good time to plan things. Uh, so, uh, 
authors seem to have these two different approaches. There's there's the Agatha Christie here, who's keep yourself busy, inspiration will come. And then there's Hemingway, who's like, I'm going to lock myself in this room for 12 hours and write nonstop. And so you're definitely falling on the more the, the former of that two. Uh, yeah, Heming- Hemingway's Hemingway's philosophy, I think, is a little bit more based is, is a little bit more humanist. You yes. know, a little bit more. Uh, uh, this will happen because of my mind and my will and my setting forth to get this done. You know, that's a very Hemingway sort of thing to do. Uh, right. uh, where, whereas uh, Agatha Christie is, 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 has got a little bit more of a faith-based approach going in. Where <laughs> they, you, you know what, the inspiration will come. This is not something that necessarily comes from inside me, and I just have to have, have the faith that I'll be able to find it, you know, when I need it. Right, uh, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and it all depends on what kind of person you are. You know? mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, as far as the approach for writing goes, that all depends on the person. Uh, uh, for me, though, yeah, I get a lot of writing done while I'm doing boring other stuff like driving. Yeah, you know, all right. So. We, also, we have another one here from one of my personal favorite, Douglas Adams, who said, I love deadlines. I like the whooshing sound they make as they fly by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me and deadlines. Uh, uh, I used to be real good about them. Uh, uh, and then some some things happened in in, in the industry, and, and I had some I had some conflicts that that resolved my way unexpectedly. And I looked around and went, wait a minute, I don't think I work for these guys. I think maybe they work for me. <laughs> uh, 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 you know, to a, to a, to a great degree, you know. Uh, uh, and 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 you know, since then since then I haven't. You know, I I, I kind of had a conflict that got resolved my way, and I sort of looked at my hands and went. Do I have superpowers? I think maybe I'm in charge here. And, and since then, it's been hard to get things done on time. Uh, I'm getting back to it now because now I'm starting to realize, oh, wait a minute. My actual bosses are not the people at Penguin. My actual bosses are the people out there who are reading my books. And they will get upset with me if I skip books for too long. So uh, uh, it's like, yeah, maybe I should maybe I should regard them as my boss and, and try and get things done on deadline for their sake. You know, and, and not necessarily for Penguin. If I can't think of them. Uh, I can at least think of the fans, and uh, uh, that that'll make things easier. Plus, you know, now there's a lot of people who, you know, when I publish a book, there's a lot of people who have work because of it. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of of, of, of drivers and handlers and booksellers and printers, uh, uh, and so on, uh, uh, who, you know, they need me to get my stuff done on time so that they have work to do today. Uh, uh, so that's also that also be, has become something that I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should be a little bit more grown up about this. Fair enough. Fair but, enough. But yes, yes, you they. They do become less as you get further in your career. The deadlines do become less of a uh, less of a strangly thing and more of a thing that you kind of go like, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. It'll be okay. Yeah, uh, we have uh, a, this is actually from the subreddit for Dresden. I don't know if you frequent it, but there is a subreddit dedicated to the series, and this is uh, how someone decided to describe uh, the Dresden Files. The Dresden Files is the story of an independent consultant in America who is forced to take a corporate job for better for better health care. I don't know about that, <laughs> but sure, you could read it that way. Okay, fair enough. Uh, 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 my favorite is always bu- it, it, my favorite description. Short description of it is uh, the sales pitch that I used uh, the, that I use when I go to Hollywood, where they're like, "Okay, so tell me what the Dresden Files is about," and I say, "Dirty Harry Potter." <laughs> Three words, you know. You got to get a whole I, lot. I, I agree with this way very much when it comes to the use of language. And uh, uh, you know, using the using the simple, elegant language, I think is 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 the best way to do it. So what I want to extra- explain the series that that's my three word pitch for the series. And they'll be like, oh, oh, well, tell me a little more. I was like, well, think Buffy the Vampire Slayer, st- starring Philip Marlowe. You know, there's the there's this big there's this you know there, there, there's a supernatural world and the supernatural detective and, and 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 that's how I you know that's how I go about selling it. Okay. Who takes a corporate job with the White Council? Yeah. Uh, and then there's one more well, here, and this oh. is a bad corporate job. That's the question, is because <laughs> really the White Council didn't have a very good health care plan for him, did they? No. <laughs> you know, Mab actually saved him from dying. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. I think that's what they might have been going for there. Um, but we have one more for the character of Dresden, and it's uh, basically applying an attribute to him. And it's saying, a bullet may have your name on it, but fireballs are addressed to who it may concern. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've heard that one before? I have. Okay. Do you agree yeah, with the yeah, sentiment yeah. behind it as the uh, creator of the character? I was just tired of reading wizards in books that never threw a fireball at anybody. 
the only time, the only wizards who threw fireballs were in the Dungeons and Dragons books. And I was like, no, we need to have action wizards. Uh, uh, you know, we got all these guys who are not doing a lot of, I mean, you know, there was Gandalf who was the icon. But, you know, all these other wizards that I read, you know, they they repeatedly did not get involved in things. You know, which is the smart way to do it in life. But, you know, in fiction, I, I want my wizard to, to definitely to lip off to the dragon. You know, I want my, my, my wizard, you know, to definitely take the, pick the wrong person to piss off. I want my wizard to, to choose somebody to be protected that he should not choose to be protected, not to do the wise thing. You know, okay. Uh, for, for, for Dresden, his wisdom was supposed to, you know, Dresden's wisdom is more about, hey, if we're all doing what's right, that's really, that's that's kind of better for everyone. You mm-hmm. know, it's sort of, it's, it's sort of his take. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I wanted to have a, I wanted to have this character who was not necessarily going to be quite as subtle as the other wizards, or at least not start there. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, by the time he's done, he might look a lot more like the classic wizards than, than, than we've seen so far. If he lives, I'm not sure if he will. Um, uh, uh, but, uh, but, you know, this guy, I wanted to start this young wizard who was going to be, you know, who was going to be lippy and rash and, and, and make bad decisions because that's where good stories come from is bad decisions. <laughs> well, that's one heck of a thing to take to heart right there. Good stories come from bad decisions. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Here's the difference is, is you want to read story, good stories, not live them. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. so, you know, let fictional characters make the really bad decisions wherever you can. And that way, you know, you can just say, well, what if I had chosen to lip off to that huge hairy guy? And, and, and well, let me go read what Harry Dre- happened to Harry Dresden. Ouch. Yeah. That, <laughs> that was a good thing. It was a good thing I just kept my mouth shut that day, you know. Now, I, I actually really, uh, going back to the actual story of Dresden, have I really like when, yes, there's action, there's all these things, but there's consequences when characters bite off more than they can chew. And where I'm at in the story, Harry's still dealing with a hand that is maimed. Uh, not to get into yeah. too detailed of spoilers, but was that again something you just kind of yes, I wanted to make sure that there are consequences for actions, or is that what was the inspiration behind having something that lasts for books? Uh, it was it was always I mean I always wanted wanted it to be that when you acted that there's there's always a reaction. That's one of the rules of of the universe. It's one of the rules of magic, and it's one of the rules of my writing. Uh, when characters do stuff, there's, you know, if, if, if it's reasonable and logical for there to be some fallback and some consequence for that, I want to bring that in wherever I possibly can. Um, I can't do everything that I'd like to because there's all these things. I mean, all every character has a life that is almost as detailed as Harry's that they're living out in my head. And, and, and I just have to, when it's time to start a new book, I have to go back and check with those characters. Okay, what have you been doing for the past, you know, nine months of story time? Or, or three years of story time, or however long it's been since we've seen them. And then I have to go through their whole life and kind of plan my way through. And this is just me sitting here staring into space. It's about 70% of my job is sitting and staring into space and talking to myself. Um, and and, and I'll, I'll have this conversation with a character. What have you been up to lately? And, and kind of hear the story of their life. And, uh, uh, and, and then it'll be like, yeah, you know, that's really interesting, but I really can't fit that into this book. Or... Uh, 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 that that's fun. It'd be a great short story, but I don't really have one that I'm writing right now. I'm doing novels right now, you know. And so, that's that's one of the reasons that writing these microfictions, because we're we're celebrating 20 years of Dresden this year. It's been 20 years, uh, uh, April 1st. Um, so the reason one of the reasons I'm writing these microfictions is I'm getting to write all these little stories and things that I know they're happening that I wish I could share, but that won't fit in a book without derailing the story that I'm trying to tell there. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, the Dresden books are all, they're all from his point of view. They're all basically written to be his worst weekend of the year. You know, I mean, that that's really, that's Harry Dresden's literary life is, is okay, let's, let's see what Harry's worst weekend of this year was. And that's, that's the next story. Interesting. So, uh, uh, sorry, I was going to say, there's been uh, a lot of talk among the fan base from what I've seen of, you know, these potential, like you're talking about how detailed these characters are, how ripe so many of them seem to be for spinoff series, spinoff you know, is there any of that in your head right now where I want to do 10 books on Michael's yeah. life? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Michael would be a terrible central character. He'd be awful. <laughs> uh, uh, Just pick the name, no, no, sorry. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, uh, no, there are some characters that are great uh, uh, for, for their own movie or, you know, for their own story and some that aren't. Michael has to be... He has to be in a story with somebody who is a lot more rumpled and stained and, and, and world-stained than he is. Uh, because if he isn't, He's not the paladin. He's just a guy. Right. <laughs> you know, you've got to have you've got to have that contrast mm. or, or Michael doesn't show up like anybody. It's like 
uh, uh, the first Jurassic Park movie where you had one character who was lippy. You had Jeff Goldblum's character, and that was that was his you know that was his that was his purpose in the story was he was the comedy relief. He was he was the snark. Uh, uh, he was the he was the the arrogance and intelligence of, of the story. You move on to Jurassic Park two where uh, uh, they bring in all these other characters and they're all lipping off and doing the you know doing the, yeah. the smart ass lines and so on. And suddenly that character doesn't matter anymore because he's just one more guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's not. He doesn't have the characteristic that 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 that, that distinguish him from other characters. Uh, so you know, you've got to be real careful when you're planning that. That's why the central character of any given story is almost always some kind of regular Joe Captain Whitebread style character uh, uh, who isn't too far off the norm, so that they can contrast all the all the wild characters around them. Um, when you see it in in sitcoms. The normal character changes every week, and everybody else is crazy. You know, like you go to Friends, the, the, there's always one normal person, and everyone else is insane. Mm-hmm. And that's the way kind of story has to work. Michael's clearly insane in a lot of ways. I mean, he's he's very much connected to faith. He's not connected to uh, uh, to what most people would think of as the real world. Uh, uh, but yet he functions well in that story because you know he has somebody to contrast against, somebody who is who is a, a rationalist character. Uh, so he's always, I mean, he's always con- contrasted against Dresden because he's, you know, that's the only time you see him on screen is when Harry's there. Mm-hmm. So as, as long as that's true, then he will always get to be that unique and cool person. But if I put him in his own story, he wouldn't be nearly as fun or nearly as awesome. Mm-hmm. So, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, almost always that usually that's a problem with clown characters and, and, and rogue characters, but I didn't realize that you would have the same problem with paladins until I started writing one. And then I went, yeah, I really couldn't do this as a, I really couldn't do him as a as a central character. Uh, it just wouldn't work out. You know, there, so, there would be some people. There would be some people who would love it, but the the the, the but the the entirety of the fan base would kind of go. Mm, but then they got. To- so you've been you've been writing this series in this universe from a first person perspective. Do you think we ever might come into this universe from a third, from a whole other point of view as a writer, where you're maybe it's a two main characters kind of bouncing out the story, or no, this is a we're going to always be in someone's head exploring this world. I, I, I could see you writing it third person, but it, it wouldn't feel right to me. I think it would always have to be from somebody's point of view. And the fun part of that is, is that it's a very different world, depending oh, on yeah. which point of view you're in. Because oh, yeah. uh, Dresden's point of view is very different from Morgan's point of view, is very different from Thomas's point of view, is very different from you know Goodman Gray's point of view. He's a character you haven't even met yet. Mm. Uh, That's but, why but, I'm yeah, not on that one. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and when I get to write the short stories from other characters' point of view... It's always a it's always a really interesting challenge to me because it's so easy to get lost uh, um, for me uh, uh, because I start realizing things about characters that I didn't really realize before. You know, I don't didn't really realize that Harry kind of comes off as somebody who might be on the autistic spectrum somewhere a lot of the time just because he doesn't make eye contact with other people. And, and that's a huge thing. Try and go around for a week not making eye contact with anyone. And, and and see how people treat you differently because I've done it just to see and you come off like a weirdo. <laughs> that's the way that works out. Uh, uh, so you know that's it's it, and it's stuff like that that you don't realize until you get until you get into it from other characters' points of view. You know Harry is, you know I mean he's a big teddy bear from inside his own point of view. Everybody else thinks he's terrifying. You know I mean for the most part yeah they think he is a scary guy. Uh, That's something I hit on in my last review of White Knight, where I feel like that theme was played up more, where everyone around Harry, he's intimidating as all hell, because he has this reputation, and yeah, no one really knows yeah, where his loyalties lie. And as he goes on, he gets the scars, and, and yeah, and, and he's just this nerd who would rather be at home reading a good book, you know, <laughs> rather than doing all this incredible stuff that he has to be out doing, he would rather be home with his dog and his cat reading a book. That, that, is, that is true in virtually 100% of Harry Dresden's scenes. That you will ever read. He would rather be back, back at home, just relaxing. But, uh, 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 but yeah, he's, uh, you know, writing that character is 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 very very different because and, and then you and then and then I start realizing, oh wait, there's other people that sort of see me the same way. They have a you know different people have a very different view of me than I do, or they're, they're, or than like my son does or my wife does, uh, uh, be, just because you know they're the ones who live with me and see me when I'm shambling around too sleepy to talk and just making vague mumbling noises, you know, and, and other people are like, oh, that's the legendary Jim Butcher. And it's like, no, that's the nerdy Jim Butcher. Then you guys just really like his books. You know? <laughs> that, is, that man is not a legend, you know, it's, it's, 
something that I've, I've encountered a bit myself about doing what I do. There's, you know, I'm, I'm the YouTuber. People look me that way. And in reality, I'm having anxiety problems exactly, over here. Exactly. Yeah. You've got like this persona that people see, you know, like doing this right here with you right now, I can do because I'm pretending to be the famous author, Jim Butcher, uh, uh, who is a character that I play because <laughs> in real life, uh, I'm like real monosyllabic and I'm, I don't talk a whole lot. And uh, I, you know, I, I sit around and just sort of make observations and, and, and smart ass comments once in a while. You know, uh, uh, and I don't like being around a lot of people. It makes me very uncomfortable. Uh, you know, even being on in traffic that's too crowded, I, I get freaked out. Uh, uh, but, you know, at the same time, my job means I have to go to conventions and see lots of people and so on. So the way I did that was I wind up pretending to be this famous person. Uh, and famous person can, like, remembers people's faces and their names. It gets things <laughs> right, remembers little details about them and so on, you know, because I'm pretending to be a guy who can do that. Yeah. And, and I can't do it in real life. But when I go pretend to be famous guy, it works. I don't know why, but it's the truth. Mm. You know? I I moved away from D.C. largely because of the traffic and crowds, so I can relate to that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I, you're coming up on 20 years of writing this now, or you're at 20 years of yeah. writing this now. and A, a little more, actually, because I was writing before it got published. But. Of course, of course. And is that – having been involved in this series, is, you know, you do seem to be coming towards the later – pages this is chapters that are coming to an end here is it kind of a mixed bag of emotions or are you kind of feeling like all right it's, it feels right it's done or do you feel like oh i'm sad you know i really want this to keep going oh uh, it's too early for that i'm okay. i'm i'm still frantically in the stages of building i can have such thoughts after i finish the the first draft of the last book you okay. know i will worry about that then uh, okay. until That's then right. i've got i've got work to do and um, mm -hmm. you know i've got stories to finish and i have to make sure my craft remains <laughs> Uh, remain solid, even though I don't get edited as heavily as I used to. And, 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 you know, I, I can always find somebody to say that was great. It's harder to find people to go, Hey, this needs work. Uh, 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 but that is, and yet that is, you know, that's the standard I aspire to as, as an artist. Um, uh, I'm always trying to write the book that I think is just a little bit beyond my ability to write. Um, uh, because even though I don't know if it's going to work out, uh, like this last one didn't work out so well, but it did teach me a whole lot. And I think the books themselves actually came out really good, uh, uh, taking what I learned from uh, trying to from the, the the monster peace talks and and breaking it up in, into two more manageable uh, uh, stories. And I think I, I think the stories both really profited artistically from that mm -hmm. uh, because it, it, at some point on a book when you're working on it, you kind of lose your perspective. You know, your ability to tell, hey, is this. You know, is this the right place for this? What what is this pacing like? You know, just because you've been working on it so long and you've seen so many versions of it, that you just kind of look at it and go, I think it's okay. You know, it, it it fits all the it fits all the guidelines and standards. But I honestly couldn't tell you if this house is pretty or not. All I know, <laughs> is that, you know, that's and that's kind of you know, kind of where I where I where I get. Uh, uh, so, and the only way to, I, I think the only way to overcome that is to keep growing as an artist. And the only way to keep growing as an artist is to hand yourself challenges you're not sure you can handle. Uh, uh, so that means, it's, you know, so, so when I come up on a new book, I'll be like, hey, I really want to do a lot of things in subtext in this book. I want to convey a lot of things to the reader without ever actually saying them. And that's, you know, that's, that's, that's hard work. And that's work that you have to do and that, that you're not going to get the book done as fast because you're trying something new. Uh, uh, but at the same time, if you just rely on just pure production, I don't think you would, I don't think you would keep growing as much as a writer. So, uh, uh, so it's, it's always important to set yourself challenges and, and to find new things to, to, to grow in, uh, in your art. Uh, so this time the challenge didn't work out as well. And it took me three years to figure out that it didn't work. Uh, uh, but at least, you know, now it's done and I'll, I'll turn out two books this year. So hopefully that'll make up for a little, uh, Which... I know, I know folks have been waiting for a long time, so. I'm, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I don't, I, I'm constantly in the deluge of fans complaining about wanting more books. <laughs> and so I can tell you, they'll be very, very excited that two. And you're the first out. one to know, so you'll be able to claim that. Yeah, <laughs> I won't be able to claim it until everyone knows. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you're the first one outside of my, you know, actual professional circle that I've talked to about it. So, you know, enjoy. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so I have to I, I have to ask every author this. It's a tradition that I always mean to ask in the beginning, but I forget, and then I have to shoehorn it at the end uh, or wherever I remember. And that is, what are you currently reading, or have you read anything recently that has really stuck with you? Uh, I am currently reading my son's fifth novel, which is oh. which I think is going to is good, is going to break him in. Uh, 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 but yeah, but uh, uh, it's a it's an urban fantasy. 
um, uh, at some point, the witch hunters of Salem and the witches of Salem realized that there were greater dangers to be faced, and so they wound up teaming up back in the day. And so they operate out of the Bureau of Unorthodox Affairs uh, uh, inside, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in within the U.S. government. And so you always have a partner, and one of them is a witch, and one of them is a witch hunter. The witch hunter's there to kill the witch once they go crazy, because that happens, you know? <laughs> But there's That's all cool. these things that have to be fought and defended against, and uh, uh, and so he's essentially he's writing a he's writing the buddy cop version of the Dresden Files, uh, and it's it's hilarious. He's snarkier than I am, uh, 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 and and so we're you know I, he's he's coming up to the end of his apprenticeship here. You know he's he's getting ready to graduate, and move out on his own, and uh, uh, his 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 stuff is good. Uh, you know, it, it's stuff that I read and laugh at, and that's that's something that I can't say about a lot of writers. So, is this published now? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. I, 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 I think I think it will be before too long, but not yet. Okay. Be sure to shoot me a message when it is. I'll be sure to plug it and get it out there. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. I'll be happy to. Do that. Um, so when I we're coming kind of on the time limit here, where I usually want to let people go. I don't want to overstay my welcome, uh, but I just want to say, you know, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it immensely, um, and. My, my final thing I want to kind of get your thoughts on is you've been in the fantasy game now for a long time. I mean, 20 years just for Dresden, that's that's an achievement. And the genre is rapidly evolving, especially with the self-publishing boom. Do you feel like you know, your observations as someone who's been around, do you think the fantasy is going in an interesting direction? Do you think like what what new in fantasy is really kind of grabbing your attention right now? Um I think that the I think that the that the the independent publishing angle is what is really changing things. Um, uh, uh, some for the better, some for the worse. Mostly just different. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more wild and imaginative fantasy as we go out because you don't have as many gatekeepers uh, uh, to say, "Hey, that you know your writing is good, but this idea is just weird, and I don't know if anybody's going to get behind it." it. You know, because they're always a little bit more conservative than the artists themselves will be. Uh, just because the ones the publishing companies are the ones that have the money at, to lose, you know. So, but when, when once you're once you got all these independent people doing it though, and people who are willing to, to gamble on their own, you know, their own dream, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm gonna see you're gonna see a lot more uh, expansion of imagination in terms of how uh, 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 fantasy series go in the future. Uh, so you'll see a lot more stuff like you know stuff that is that is that is video game style fantasy as in virtual world fantasy you know that that's, that's practically become a genre of its own you know, uh, 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 you know we all got stuck in the virtual world and now we're, we're really, uh, uh, and stuff like that is going to continue happening over the next 20 and 30 years and we're i think we're going to start seeing things that that we've never thought about before and never imagined before i mean the kind of wild over the top stuff um, uh, and some of it will be amazing and some of it will just be terrible uh, <laughs> And some of it will be amazingly terrible or terribly amazing. One of the two, you know, it's it's like watching a movie like, um, uh, have you watched the the Batman Samurai movie? Or oh yeah. Ninja, uh, where where they wind up in the castles and the castles then animate into giant robots and then the castles form into mega robots. Uh, and it's like I don't know if this is the 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 dumbest awesome Batman movie I've ever seen or the most awesome dumb Batman movie I've ever seen. But it's definitely one of those two, and I think I think that's we're we're going to see more and more of that in the future. We're going to see more and more people whose imaginations just get to to do whatever they want, and somebody in the boardroom thinks this is highly questionable, but it will happen anyway. <laughs> you know, I think that's I think that's the, sort of the direction we're going in uh, at the moment, and that's great. Uh, and I also think we're going to see you know we're going to see the emergence of you know new genres and and new voices that people look at and go, hey, that's that's Tolkien, but for this. You know, I, I think we're going to start seeing that too in the future. Uh, uh, I, I really, I think it's a very exciting time as far as storytelling goes, both to be working and to be and to be reading. There's so much good stuff that it's hard to watch everything that's good on TV. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like <laughs> that is the best problem ever. Oh yeah. Uh, because it also means that you know all of, that all of us creators are going to be you know we're going to be competing that that much harder, uh, that much more ferociously to to produce really good stuff that people enjoy. I think it's a great time to be a fan. Uh, uh, and it's and it's it's a great time to be a writer too. I I, I love what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so so much for coming on. I appreciate it immensely. Peace talks and uh, battlegrounds will be out this year. I'm very excited. I'll have my hands on them. I'm hoping to catch up in Dresden by the time they're released. Yeah. So that's Peace my talk, marathon. Peace talks July uh, 14th and battleground will be out. Uh, I think it's the second week of October. Fantastic. I think it's right about the same point in October. So. Right as we're getting into the spooky season, we'll have another Dresden book come down the road. Exactly. 
and yeah, and this is this 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 is a big one too. I mean, uh, I, I it, it's it, there's a lot of action figures that have stayed on the shelf. I haven't really scuffed them up too much in battle, you know, uh, in the Dresden Files. Not this time. <laughs> this this time, every everybody everybody's in. You know, everybody's off the bench in this one. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, thank you so much. I'll go ahead and stop the recording here. Like and subscribe, everybody, if you have not already. And I'll have a have a good one. I screwed that up, and I'm going to use that. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on.